with uh, optimization of PCI by intracoronary physiology. Thank you very much for giving me a chance to talk about the physiology. This is my disclosure slide. So let's start the case 60s years of male angina. You can identify two regions, proximal and distal, very tight region. And this is a physiology pullback, FFR pullback. Uh, proximal pressure gradient seems to be predominant as shown here. And uh, compared with distal pressure gradient, although degree of stenosis seems to be similar in this serial stenosis, then we have to treat the, the bigger pressure gradient based on the PPG index. And after putting a stent in the proximal site, uh, the distal pressure gradient becomes predominant as shown in this slide, and distal FFR is 0.66, it's not enough. Then we have to treat the distal region, and then additional stenting in the distal region demonstrate no discrete pressure gradient and gradually pressure recovery. It could be identified along with LAD. That means uh, the diffuse disease we cannot treat anymore. And uh, this is a final result. Uh, FFR is 0.85, right? And this is another case, 83 years old uh, OMI patient, old myocardial infarction, and Yes, this is an angiography, and this is an resting indices, RFR. You can identify the three regions by angio and also the three e pressure gradient uh, by a, a resting indices. There are three stenosis, and uh, RFR in the distal would be uh, uh, if you treat uh, this region B, uh, distal uh, the, uh, value will increase 0.18, therefore, a final uh, RFR should be 0.87, like this, right? You can speculate the final result by resting indices. And then we put a stand uh, in the region, and then, the, yes, the final IFR is 0.86. We speculate 0.87, uh, a little bit different, but it's okay. Then uh, this is a comparison. We speculate uh, 0.87 finally. But the final result is 0.86. And additional, if you put a additional stent, you may increase a little bit, but then a, a total ischemia is not so different. Then we finish uh, in this co uh, po uh, condition. And this is an IFR. I, by uh, using a sync vision, uh, uh, yellow dot demonstrate 0.01 uh, pressure gradient. Therefore, we can identify the uh, severe uh, yes, uh, region here, but angiographically there are two regions. How to treat this? If you treat uh, the proximal site, uh, final IFR should be 0.86, we can speculate, and if you put a longer stand, yes, IFR will become uh, greater, uh, 0.93, however, the longer stand may have an, a problem because of a 44 millimeter, uh, if you try to treat completely, then we selected uh, 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 sm uh, uh, smaller stent, and then uh, the final result is 0 0.86. And, uh, and uh, distal portion here, the real value is 0 0.85. So you can speculate uh, the final result by resting indices. It is very important, as shown in this slide. There are many resting indices, but there are a good correlation as shown in this slide. Also, RFR, uh, DPR, uh, IFR, everything is a good correlation as shown in this slide. What is the cutoff point of the resting indices compared with an FFR 0 0.80 demonstrate 0 0.89 in the resting indices? So uh, if the value is less than 0 0.89, it is ischemia in resting indices. And uh, this is a, a diagram of stenosis flow or field and separation uh, should be uh, predominant. And as you know, the pressure gradient uh, composed of um, friction and separation as shown in this slide. And separation should be predominant in discrete focal region and friction should be uh, predominant in diffuse long region. Therefore, for the assessment of ischemia, FFR hyperemia might be suitable to, uh, di to the discrete region and non hyperemic resting indices might be ideal to diffuse long region to assess the region severity, right? And there are, uh, the, clinically, there are very confused, uh, uh, complex region. 
diffuse region, as, as I told you, the predomi uh, friction predominance or resting indices beta and focal region uh, separation predominant, therefore, FFR is beta, as I told you. Why, uh, 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 when you use an FFR, we have to think about crosstalk. Uh, uh, when you assess the physiological significance of pre proximal region in case with serial stenosis, right? At the, the resting condition, uh, this is A is a serial stenosis, uh, B is a single stenosis. But resting condition, the flow condition is very similar like this, uh, the uh, orange color and uh, here, right? There are no significant differences in flow, but during hyperemia, uh, the distal portion, uh, there are no flow limitation just after the, the stenosis. Therefore, the flow should be very big and uh, hyperemic flow uh, like this. And then, uh, yes, in, in the uh, upper portion, the flow might be here because of the limitation of the flow by the distal stenosis. Therefore, uh, flow and pressure drop should be smaller during hyperemia in case with serial stenosis. And resting indices might be better to assess the each region severity for serial stenosis. In serial stenosis, cross-talk between proximal and distal stenosis should be considered during hyperemia, as you know. Therefore, uh, by resting indices, you can clearly speculate the uh, pressure curve after treatment, and this is a speculation. There are good correlation between the uh, speculation and uh, the res real result. There are clinically, uh, there are a lot of different disease. Focal region, uh, FFR is beta. Diffuse region is resting indices is beta. Serial stenosis, uh, st uh, resting indices is beta. Mixed region, uh, resting indices should be beta to assess the region. Uh, then uh, what is the uh, ideal ending point? There are no uh, actual ending point recommendation. This is one of the data post FFR. They divided the uh, three quartile as shown in this slide, different color. And in case with an FFR more than uh, 9, uh, 0.92, uh, prognosis is uh, better, uh, best compared with a uh, lower FFR less than 0.88. Therefore, at least we, speculate, uh, we have to obtain a point more than 0.88. And in ideal, 0.92 should be uh, best to obtain a good result, and, uh, as shown in this slide. There are one study, another study showing uh, the end point, right? Uh, if you treat uh, the region uh, with a uh, longer region, uh, stent length may relate to the prognosis and post FFR also relate to the prognosis. It may depend on the stent length. If the length is less than 30, uh, FFR is the uh, most uh, predictive uh, uh, indexes. And, but if the stent length is more than 30 millimeter, uh, stent length is the most predictive for the future event and then FFR as shown in this slide. And another uh, uh, data showed the FFR should be more than 0.86. And uh, this is another data, uh, final FFR should be more than 0.84. And uh, as I told you, there are no dis uh, description of physiological cutoff value for optimized PCI. But to improve the prognosis, ideal post-PCI FFR endpoint would be at least point more than 0.85 and ideally more than 0.92 and greater should be the beta. And post PCAI, a non hyperemic pressure ratio endpoint should be a more than 0.89, right? And recently, CT FFR or ANGIO FFR is uh, available now and uh, we can good, uh, get a good uh, yes, correlation. And this is a uh, virtual stenting. If you put a stand here and percent diameter stenosis becomes uh, 52 to 10 percent, FFR becomes 0 0.71 to 0 0.74. So this uh, stand is not effective. We have to treat this. So, uh, and uh, there are some, uh, yes, uh, uh, description. If you put a stand here and then, uh, doesn't work, right? Yes, uh, if you put the proximal side stent, FFR becomes 0.94 and then pull back, uh, demonstrate a good, uh, nearly one zero, right? And then uh, this is an, uh, a CT angiography 
uh, result and uh, the, uh, prediction, uh, there are good correlation. Also, angio FFR demonstrated good correlation within FFR and also another data. And recently, FAVOR 3 demonstrated compared with uh, angiography uh, 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 guided versus uh, QC, uh, QFR guided demonstrate uh, QFR is much better. And then uh, the best cutoff might be a QFR more than 0.89. And uh, this is the, another. Thank you very much, Dr. Takashi Akasaka.